<laughs> Hi, welcome to Sticks and Stones. I'm Julia. And I'm Sue. And this is episode 10, Casting Off. Today at Sticks and Stones podcast, we are going to teach you how to cast off your knitting. Now that you've been practicing so hard and getting your stitches right, it's time to figure out how to get them off your needles. So join us for the cast off lesson, as well as seeing what we're doing in Sue's sewing world and Julia's knitting world. Woohoo! We made it to episode 10! Yay! 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 Who would have Yay! thought? Yay! Double digits. Can you believe it? It's been, what, five? <laughs> up so fast. <laughs> it's been five whole months since we started really? this Really? That's hard to believe. I know. It's amazing. So we thanks to you guys for for always being there for us. Yes. <laughs> and watching. At least we think you are. I know. I hope you are. <laughs> if you're not, just ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> they can because they're not. <laughs> so what have you been working on lately? Well, I threw a party for a friend of mine, mm. and uh, she's always throwing fabulous parties for other people. Mm -hmm. In fact, my husband had a surprise party for me, and she said, you take care of the guest list, I'll take care of everything else. And it was just gorgeous decorations. It was a beautiful party. Um, super food, just great. Yeah. So I thought it was her turn. And so I worked and worked and worked for lots on lots of decorations for the party. This is cool. So this is the bunting that I made. Um, with all different kinds of fabrics. Yeah. It's kind of a little rainbow blast when you showed up. Um, and then I also had some uh, birds hanging from the canopy. Oh, very like this cool. one. This pattern is actually from Spool, uh, which is a shop in Philadelphia that sells um, fabric. They also have knit, which sells yarn. Yeah. And uh, this is the original pattern. And then I modified it and added wings. I love the colors. Yeah, love so them. it's fun. You can make a lot of these with scraps. I've I've gotten so much mileage out of this pattern. I uh, make bird mobiles for folks when they're having babies. Oh, that's great. And so these were hanging all over the canopies, uh, like they, we were inside. It was a woodland nice. party theme. And then um, all the cupcakes were lined up on this big thing. Oh my goodness. So this is a a uh, cupcake stand that I made from birch and um, wood yeah. that my parents <laughs> had. And this is one of those things. I actually joined Pinterest so I could stalk my friend to yeah. see what her favorite things yeah. were. And um, this was one of the things that she had been telling me about that she was going to have her I husband make. And um, definitely one of those projects that looks a lot easier than it really, really? is. Really? Huh. Well, when you're trying to slice a piece this you know a two inch piece with a chainsaw True. and you're trying to okay. get it square you know flat yeah. and then then you have to slice these pieces and you know on the internet it's just like cut it put it together voila and then, but then it's like oh look it's rocking oh no how do we get a balance oh so did you cut it yourself no, my dad helped me. <laughs> if you could use I a was, chainsaw, I I'm gonna. Holding, I probably could use a chainsaw, but I was holding the log, and he was, he was cutting That's it. That's great. So, well, it looks really neat. Yeah. So it looked fabulous with the cupcakes yeah. from 80 Cakes on there, and um, yeah, it was a great time. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. Wish so, I could have uh, I'm gonna take that down. What have you been working on? Oh well, I have been pretty busy actually. I um. I finished the first half of my sweater. Wow. So there it is. Um, it doesn't look like half a sweater, but again, this is the sleeve over here. Uh, so this goes around my arm like this? Yeah, actually it'll go, it will go this way. So the sleeve comes down across and under, and then... Look at that, it fits me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're and not it, getting this it one. It goes with the gloves you made me. <laughs> you're not getting this one. <laughs> <laughs> it comes down this way, and there will look be. Look how gorgeous I look. There will be a band <laughs> down here, so it's a little short right now. But that's the general idea of it. Nice. And plus, it'll it'll stretch out because it's not blocked yet, so the lace will be more defined. Nice. But I am so excited. That, you know, it's almost half done, and I can see the the end of the tunnel, and I've got you know this much started on the second side. Oh, so you knit the two sides separately and then you sew them together? Right. Actually, that's what this part here is for. Um, these stitches are still live, so when I get them both done, I bind them off together. Okay. So there, there won't be an obvious seam here. Um, and then the front will be all cast off already. So all I have to do then, once the back is attached, because it's a cardigan, 
is um, put the buttons down the front and sew the band around the bottom. That's all. That's it. I know. <laughs> That would well, take me yeah. years. Like this little guy. <laughs> That's like all you do is stick the little pieces of fabric together and you have a bird. Yeah, you know what that bird would look like if I tried to do it? An elephant? <laughs> Probably, or an amoeba, or, so, yeah, so, good thing we all have our talents. <laughs> so, but yeah, so the first half is finished and I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm loving the color of it. Um, the yarn is really nice to work with, so. It's this, really beautiful. I like that color a lot. This is, um... Anzula Squishy is what it's called, but it is pretty squishy. I got it at um, Pearl Soho on our anniversary trip. Nice. So there's that. And then I've been spinning a little bit again. I, I keep trying to practice getting... Do you get dizzy? <laughs> if you watch the wheel too much, yeah. But luckily I don't have to look at that. So no, this is a... I think it's a merino blend, but I've been practicing trying to get it thin and even. So I think I'm, I'm doing better. If I can find the end, I'll show you guys how... There it is. It's pretty thin. I think it looks pretty even to me. And I'm really liking the colors in here too. I've been very into this teal this year. Is this the same one right here? Yeah, it's all the same skein, all the same piece of, of um, fiber. It was dyed previously to, to um, working it up. So it's got the dark purple and there's some yellow and some peach and some teal and I just love it. It's nice. So that's my other project I've been doing kind of on the side. And that is that for now. Fun! Yeah. We've been busy. We've been very busy. Maybe it's time to take a break before our school starts. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a month till, no, less than a month mm -hmm. till school starts. So this is going to be the, the roundup before the fall. And we'll be back with lots of other exciting projects. Again, if you guys have projects you want us to see, anything seasonal that yeah. you would like to see us work on, Give us a shout, and we'll be happy to oblige. Yes, or put so. them on. Um, put a picture of your projects that you've mm -hmm. been working on. Yep, pictures, like comments. To see those. Okay. All right, we'll be there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this time it's a different <laughs> <laughs> In case this stays for some reason. <laughs> My son just knocked his head on yet another table in their house while we're out here recording. <laughs> yeah. So. so join us back here for your lesson on casting off and we'll be right back. Today we're going to talk about casting off and I made a little swatch here and I wanted to show you some of the basic stitches you might find along the edge of a garment. Um, first over here is stockinette stitch. Then I have a two by two rib. This next section is garter stitch. And then over here at the end, this little square is seed stitch. Now the, obviously you can tell there's differences. The stockinette stitch has a nice rolled edge, which is a great look if that's what you're going for. But um, you don't always want that extra fabric at the bottom of your sweater. And even though this is all the same number of stitches, you can tell that there's a difference between the um, length of the fabric of the garter stitch and of the stockinette stitch over here. The garter stitch is a lot more squished together, but it has a nice flat edge. So that's something for you to think about when you're working with a garment. What kind of edging do you want? Do you need to put an extra band on the bottom or can you just leave it as is? Um, most of the time you will find a ribbed edge at the bottom of a sweater or you might find a nice seed stitch or garter stitch along a button band. So I'm going to show you a real basic cast off. Um, there are several out there that you might see written in a pattern depending on the kind of stretch you would need, but I'm going to show you the one that is the most basic that you'll probably use most often. So you'll begin with a knit stitch. Again, remember you go front to back and I'm doing English. So I wrap my yarn around the back needle and pull it through. So this is just like normal knitting off the end there. Now the second stitch is where it changes. Knit another stitch, pop it off the end, but instead of going to the third, you're going to pick up your first stitch with your left hand needle and pull it over the second and drop it right off. So now you only have one stitch on your right hand needle and the other one is looped around the base. So again, because I'm doing stockinette stitch bind off, I'm going to knit and then pull that first stitch over 
the second and off. So now you have two stitches bound off. Sometimes this can also be used as a shaping technique along a sleeve edge and then there it will be called a decrease. So knit, pick up this first stitch over the second and it's bound off. You can see it kind of looks like a, a string of crochet stitches going across the top band now and you always have one stitch there on your right hand needle. I have two more stitches to go in my stockinette and then I'm going to change to the rib and I'll show you how that works when I get there. So pull that over the top again and the last knit stitch off and first stitch goes over. So now I've bound off this whole section. You'll notice this next stitch here is actually a purl stitch and this is um, the one section of the 2x2 two two rib. When you cast off in rib in order to keep the elasticity of it, you want to cast off in pattern, meaning you're going to want to knit the knits and purl the purls. So here I'm purling, the needle goes from back to front you bring your yarn around like always at the, on the front side of the fabric, pop it off, and then just pull over that first stitch like we've been doing. So now for purling again, the yarn is in front, needle goes back to front, loop around, pop it off, and pull right over the top. You want to keep some good tension here because if this stitch gets too loose, it'll come off the needle and then you have to go pick it up. So now that section of the rib is completed. I'm going to go back with my yarn to the back of the fabric to do these two knit stitches. Just like before, I'll just keep on going. You pull over the top, always having one stitch left on your right hand needle. So now that whole first half is bound off. So now I'm going to move on to the garter stitch section. Remember that the garter stitch is knitting on both the front and the back, so we're just going to continue on with the knit stitch as we were before. Always pulling that first stitch over the second. You can get a good rhythm going after a while. And I've got two more stitches here, so here's one Go over the top and the last garter stitch. Seat stitch is a one by one rib basically, except you alternate from the front to the back. So you're always lining up a purl stitch on top of a knit stitch and then a purl stitch. So um, I'm not going to get into the details of exactly how to do that today, but um, what you need to know for casting this off is that you have to alternate which stitch you do. So take a look here. If you see a bump, that means it's a purl. It means you have to bring your needle to the or your yarn to the front and purl that first stitch. Next stitch, look, there's a V, so that's a knit. Look again, here's a bump, so that's a purl. Bring your yarn to the front. I missed, there we go. And there's a V, so it's a knit. And then the last stitch over here is a purl. So we have cast off the entire row. Now if I had some scissors I would cut it, but what you do is pull that last stitch real big, cut your end, and just pull it through to close that off. So now you see I have a nice edge here. This is the cast off edge. And like I said before, it looks like a nice row of crochet stitches. Um, but you can tell here, I pull this, it doesn't go very far. It's kind of a sturdy edge, which is real good for 
lots of um, garment construction, um, but if you want to be able to fit something over your head or over your waist, you're going to want a little bit more give like you'll find here in the rib section. Again, this one's pretty sturdy and this one's pretty sturdy. So there is your cast off edge. So now Sue's practicing casting off. Oops, sorry. That's all right. These needles are very long. The only time I've ever cast off before is when I almost tucked everyone in the fishing boat. Oh, wait, that's <laughs> casting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she's just knitting, which is what Sue's been practicing, so this is excellent. And then, yeah, she's now taking the second, the first stitch over the second. Oh, I can't get it on there, though. There's some trick here. Um, is it... It's because I've been knitting on wooden needles. Yeah, that's part of it. And also because um, you're a beginner knitter, you tend to be a little tighter. Mm. And it's harder to get the needle through a tight stitch. So I made that last stitch too tight, is what you're saying. Ooh, there we go. Maybe a little bit. Good. All right. Look at that. So it's pretty straightforward. Look yeah, this is, this is pretty much what I've been doing except adding one step. Yep. I still have to figure out how to do the uh, other stitches, but we'll work on that. Yeah. Okay, pop quiz, pop quiz. I didn't study, and so I just think <laughs> I'm not going to do well. And Let's just see if you can tell me what the stitches are. I'm going to turn them this way so everybody can see it again. Okay, this one's the seed stitch. I remember that. Yes. And this is garter stitch. Very good. This is the rib stitch. Mm -hmm. And this is the stitch that they used on every sweater that was sold by Benetton when I was in sixth grade. Because everybody had the sweaters, maybe it was seventh, with the rolled collars and yes. the rolled bottoms. Yes, yes. And is it wonderful. called the Benetton stitch? It is not. <laughs> it is not, however. <laughs> Do you remember what it is called? No! Stock. Oh, stockinette. Stockinette. I always remember it because it sounds like stockings to me, and everybody used to knit stockings and stuff. Oh, okay. So that's so. it. Really wasn't for sweaters. It was for stockings. I don't know. <laughs> I am speculating. I really don't know about that, but that's what it's called. Sometimes you'll see it called stocking stitch too. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So this is all you do, just all the way across the row, same stitch over and over again. It gets a little tedious when you work in a shawl with a 600 stitch edge. Oh my gosh. But That'll um, be next week's project for me. Yeah. So that's that. Very good on the pop quiz. She gets a 95, no, 3 out of 4 is 75, sorry. But I was so close. I, I recognized it from pop culture. True. So I think I get bonus points for that. <laughs> you also just aged yourself. <laughs> it's not. I, yeah. That was my older sister. <laughs> I know I totally missed it. <laughs> oh no, what did I do? So where are you here? I messed it up. All right, let me look. Oh, I just have to take the second stitch over the first, or did I mess them up? What you did is you're good at splitting stitches. You have both stitches here. Actually, let me look here. Just somehow they got twisted. I seem to do that a lot. I think yeah. that's what happened with some of my other ones. Next, yeah. Troubleshooting is always a good thing. So yeah, you just. You saw I just took them off there. As long as you don't pull this other stitch or this other string, they're not going to go anywhere. So you can take them off, look at them, and put them back on your needle. And if it's split, you can pick up that other looks extra strand and keep on going. There we go. Okay. Good. All right. What questions come to mind as you do this? Um, I don't know, because I only know one stitch. <laughs> So this pretty much is, so when you snip the thread off, mm -hmm. it just won't come unraveled. Can you snip, snip it really close by, or do you have to weave it back yeah. through the... Uh, you want to leave a little bit of a, a tail to weave in, just so it's smoother. Otherwise, you, you do, you have kind of like a little nub sticking out. And sometimes this is going to be the edge of your neck, and you don't want to have a little... <laughs> it won't be that long, but you don't want to have a piece of string sticking up and... Right messing up the fabric. So leave enough that you can take it and weave it back into the back of the fabric when you're done. And do you use a needle to do that? Mm -hmm. Like a, a tapestry, tapestry needle? needle? Yep. Or a crochet hook. That works too. A real small crochet hook. Okay. Well thanks for joining us again on this episode of Sticks and Stones. And uh, get to finishing those projects so that you can practice your cast off too. See you later. Bye. Bye.